Well, Dave, today's supposed to be the middle of Ohio State's spring break. We don't have any interviews or anything this week. I was going to sit outside and enjoy the nice weather, work on some stuff here in Columbus, Ohio, and then we get news today. Tony Alford is leaving the Buckeyes, and not just leaving the Buckeyes, but he's going north to be the running backs coach at Michigan. Um, I know you were a little bit, uh, you weren't caught completely off guard by this. So as much as you can say, why don't you kind of take the the listeners behind the scenes of, of when you started to hear rumblings of this and, and your reaction to the situation? Yeah, very late last week, I had an excellent source tell me, you won't believe this, but there's a chance Tony Alford is going to be the next running backs coach at Michigan. I'm like, what? And this source is like a you know, fantastic source. And I'm like, okay, please tell me you're joking. Like, now you not joking. I'm not joking. Here's the deal. And uh, broke it down. We dumbed it down. We put a little item in the boarding house earlier this week. So it, it boils down to this. After um, the 2023 season, certain guys were left go from the coaching staff. Certain guys got extensions. And Tony Alford was one of those that was like in the middle. Like he wasn't let go, but he also was not given a contract extension. And my source told me we knew that. But my source then told me they reached out to Eddie George and offered him the running back job. They were going to, you know, they wanted to get Eddie George um, to Ohio State. He was obviously the head, the head coach of Tennessee Tech, or excuse me, Tennessee State, yeah. um, HBCU right now. Um, and um, Eddie wanted to stay there and, and, you know, keep building what he promised to do. He's so new there. I believe he's entering just his second year there. Um, so uh, I'm sure the situation where Tony Alford knew the writing was on the wall that, you know, he only had one more year left at Ohio state. And, um, but the fact that he's going to Michigan, man, I mean that at, at, at that point, and listen, it sounds like Michigan's giving him a three-year contract at about what, 800,000 a year. I mean, okay. If that's true, if those reports are true, I mean, that's $2.4 million. Hopefully that would be like guaranteed. If you're as aging, you're going to make sure that's guaranteed no matter what happens. If they go on sanctions, whatever happens, hopefully that money's guaranteed. So, if he thinks he's not coming back to Ohio State. Michigan's offered him two point four million guaranteed over three years. I mean, my God! I, I guess if I take my scarlet and gray uh, glasses off, I get it. But it's like of all places, you're going to Michigan. Like it does seem personal. But then again, it probably is. It probably is. He was not given an extension. He knows they were reaching out to. If I know they were reaching out to Eddie George, I guarantee you, Tony Alford knows that. Um, so. You got, here's my thoughts on it. I'm curious to get your thoughts on it. Yeah, real similar to, to what you said there, Dave. Um, look, it, if it were another school other than Michigan, I think people are still disappointed to see a guy leave. And we'll, we'll kind of get to the timing of all this here in a minute. But you're not as disappointed to see him go to a rival who has now beaten you three times. We've talked to Tony Alford about Michigan. He's the longest serving Ohio State assistant coach. He knows about this rivalry. Um, and as somebody pointed out in the comments here, not the first coach to, to jump ship. Obviously, just a few years ago, we saw two guys go the other way and Al Washington and Greg Madison come on down to Columbus and have some success. So not entirely Gary surprising. Moller, Bo yeah, yeah. Yep, exactly. So My, and I know Bo didn't go straight from Ohio State to Michigan. Right. That's some people, I think that gets lost in translation. People think Bo like jump ship from Ohio State. Like, is everybody – who, who knows the story, knows that Bo obviously was Woody's right-hand man when he was at Ohio State, and then went to Miami of Ohio, then went to Michigan from there. So it wasn't the same. Gary Moeller a little different. Gary Moeller was a captain at Ohio State and became Michigan's head coach. I think that's trader-type material, but that's just me. Yeah, and I've seen a few people talking about um, – running backs, transfer portal, recruiting. We're going to have Bill Curlick on here after Dave's done um, in about 10 minutes or so. He'll talk some of the recruiting impact of, of this move. Uh, I brought it up, Dave, the, the timeline of this. The Buckeyes started spring practice last week. They're going to pick back up. It's spring break, as I mentioned off the top. They're going to pick back up next week. But Tony Alford had opportunities to leave if he wanted to. In January, there were some at least reported interests. Notre Dame, I know, where he was before Ohio State was one of the teams. I think USC might have been uh, interested as well. He decided to stay at Ohio State. Now you get two weeks into spring practice, or sorry, you will be two weeks into spring practice starting next week. Ohio State doesn't have a running backs coach. Where do the Buckeyes go from here? I wrote a little bit about this already on Bucknuts if you want to check out the story, but 
What do you think the Buckeyes do here? Let's talk short term first, and then maybe we can talk some potential names down the road. Yeah, it's interesting. I think I, another like great thing about Chip Kelly being here, like if you, let's say you had to put, okay, Chip, you also have to like coach the running backs, you know, during spring ball. Like, so comparatively speaking to what he's done over the last 16 years, that's not like a, a tremendous amount on Chip Kelly's plate. So, Patrick, I think it's going to be a combination of, whoever was like, you know, Tony's right-hand man as far as like a grad assist or a quality control guy, or maybe a guy that was a, a quality control guy helping out with something else, that guy will have more impact now in the running back room. And I think Chip Kelly now will now take over more of that. We talk a lot about how um, all his run concepts and what he's going to bring to this running game. So it makes a lot of sense in the meantime that Chip Kelly and then he, you know, a grad assistant takes on a bigger role and or a quality control assistant for the time being, it is. It's weird timing. I thought about that because we saw Tony out there. And, you know, I want to let people know, personally, I, I love Tony Alford. I do. And, you know, my source who told me about all of this late last week reached out today said people are going to blame Tony for this, but it's not his fault. Like, he was basically told, like, you know, you're done after this year. And like, you can stay on as a lame duck if you want. That's not how it was presented to him. But, like, you know, I mean. I, I, I see better than what I hear. You know, I love that. I love that quote. I see better than what I hear. And, you know, my, my source is telling me, like, people can blame Tony if they want, but, like, and I don't blame Ryan Day either because I'm also being told, and I know you know this as well, Patrick, um, this is not Ryan Day just being mean to Tony Alford for no reason. Like, they've really had to, like, try to get him to recruit. Um, and, like, not that Tony wasn't recruiting, but, like, really get more into it and, and really buckle down in recruiting. Again, I personally love Tony, so like I don't I don't want to like um, trash the man. I love the man, but I have heard that from people I trust. I know you have as well. That you know they had to like kind of like come on, come on. You had to like multiple times. Like Brian Day was not happy with recruiting, and that and then you look at some of the production from running backs at Ohio State. He produced J.K. Dobbins as a as an NFL running back, and that's that, that was the only one so far. So. Um, it's interesting, man, but it is, it is it's weird timing seeing Tony out there last week, you know, coaching the first two practices of spring. Now he's gone for the final 13 practices, including the spring game as a practice. I've never seen anything like this at Ohio State, but I guess it's kind of congruent with this offseason that we're having. We've although this is I'm not saying this is a good thing, but like I've never seen like just a more interesting offseason. And, buddy, we're only like, what, two and a half months into it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a, a crazy one. This only adds to it. You're talking about the production of the running backs in Tony Alford's what nine seasons he had at Ohio state, only two top 10 rushing finishes statistically. Now he did have two number 11 overall, actually his first two seasons, exactly the same rushing yards per game. But last season, number 88, the two seasons before that, both outside the top 30. So there was a lot of highs under Tony Alford, but there were also some lows. And look, I think he's one of the better coaches in the country. Obviously, the running game is is a part of the, the offense as a whole, and you need the offensive line to be blocking, which I think was part of the issue last season. Guys have to stay healthy. But it wasn't as if Ohio State year after year was a top 15 rushing attack under Tony Alford. So, you know, I think if you're looking for the the positives, so to speak, maybe that's not the right word, but, you know, this you're, if you're trying to not look at this as a, a negative completely for Ohio State, there's that side of it as well that the, that the Buckeyes you know haven't been an elite rushing attack every season under Coach Alfred. And there Dave, have been too many recruiting misses. There really have yeah, been. Yeah, like you know, and I I don't think that Travion Henderson's now going to transfer because of this. I don't think Quinshawn Judkins is going to transfer. I don't think Dallin Hayden's going to transfer. I don't think James Peoples going to transfer. I hate to speak for any of the, those young men, but like, and Ryan Day. What have we seen from Ryan Day, especially this offseason? He ain't messing around. Who are they bringing as running backs coach? Is not going to be a scrub. You know, like I, right now, and Ryan Day I probably knows right now who it's going to be. He's at least obviously reached out and is talking to people. Maybe he can, like, reconvince uh, Eddie George. Who knows? But uh, whoever walks into this, Ryan Day, I'm sure, is going to hire a good coach. And they're walking into just a beautiful situation with Travion Henderson, Quinshawn Judkins, who you and I have talked could be, could be the best one-two punch in college football this year at the running back position. Um, then you still have Dallin Hayden, James Peoples. Um, Sam Williams Dixon also is on scholarship. Then you got TC Cappy as, as the main uh, walk on. It's a really good job to sell if you're trying to get a running backs coach to come here to Ohio State. Yeah. Plus, the Buckeyes will be able to offer plenty of money, you know, whatever they need to, I imagine, to get the guy they want. Um, and I agree with you on the transfers. Look, 
Quinchon Judkins didn't come to Ohio State because of Tony Alford. He came here because he saw an opportunity to win a national championship. Travion Henderson has talked about the loyalty he has to this program this offseason. Not necessarily Tony Alford, though he is a part of, of that. Dave, if you, you were talking about it there. If you were to – I don't know if you want to throw out any names, but you bring up Eddie George. If you're Ryan Day, Eddie George obviously great but he's only been coaching for two, three years. Are you looking for a veteran guy who's proven it at a high level at in college or, you know, or maybe the NFL, or would you prefer to have somebody like an Eddie George who maybe has ties back to the program and, and is like a Brian Hartline or, or some of the other coach, James Laurinaitis that we've seen. If Eddie George wants the job, that would be awesome. Um, but it, you know, he's already turned it down once as far as my source yeah. told me, as we put in the boarding house, um, was it uh, what Monday's boarding? I can't. What what day is it? Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, it, was Monday, it, was Monday, yeah. it was either Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember which day we put that in the boarding house now. But yeah, I was told that on Friday. Um, so assuming Eddie is going to stick with what he said, and the reason he turned it down is not because he, Eddie loves Ohio State, it's because he wants to you know stay at Tennessee State and, and keep building what he promised to build there. Um, could his, his could his opinion change? Um, possibly. I don't think it will. So then to answer your question, if Eddie George is off the table, man, I want them to get like a proven running backs coach. And again, this is a you talk about, as you mentioned, uh, we talk about the money that they can, you know, pay this running backs coach. When you talk about the, the position that he's walking into, this 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 unbelievable it's like Matt Guerrero with the safeties. Are you kidding me? You walk in here and you get Caleb Downs and Lathan Ransom as your starters. You got Jihad Carter, who was a good player at Syracuse. Fifth year senior is a backup, Malik Harper backup. But it's like you're just walking into a gold mine. So it would be an easy job to sell if you're Ryan Day. And I think he will find a very good coach. So I want somebody who's proven. Do I have a name for you? I do not. I don't have a name for you. Um, but I have no doubt Ryan Day um, has a few names on his short list. And I'm very confident that he's going to hire a good running backs coach. Yeah. And last thing, and, and Bill Curlick's going to jump on here in just a minute. But uh, you, you mentioned we don't think the players are going to transfer. But what do you think if you are Travion Henderson, Quinn Chandra, any of those guys in the running back room, you leave after practice on Thursday, see a coach, you come back just over a week, you know, maybe down down at the beach or something on spring break. Now you're working with uh, GA, you're working with Chip Kelly. I mean, what do you think's going through those guys' minds? It's tough, man, because, like you know, as, as I've been told from multiple sources um, over the last few years, and I, I put this out there on Buck Nuts and on the Buck Nuts Morning 5, Tony Alford's – God, I hate I say it in the past tense, was kind of like the dad of the team. Like if you're like yeah. a guy, like and you're like, even if you have like, I'm sorry, he was like the father figure of the team. Now the guys do feel, especially for a head coach, Ryan Day is very approachable. You can go to his office, you can talk to Ryan Day. But as far as like you take Ryan Day out of the equation, you don't you're not trying to talk to the boss man, you want to talk to one of the assistants. I was I've been told by multiple parents that like Tony Alford's the guy that the boys would go to. And even guys that had a father that they loved would still consider him like still a father figure, you know, even yeah. though he's kind of like a, a second father. And there's, obviously there's guys that really don't have a, you know, a dad in the picture and like they're away and they, Tony would take those guys under his wing. So like another reason I love the man, I, I, you know, again, like I, I wish it was a different school, like uh, business wise, I get it. He's 55 years old. He, he you know, he, he had nothing guaranteed after this year, but I have mixed emotions, man. So the, I mean, I'm sure the guys are, you know, you know, assuming they love him, and I don't know what the relationship is with Quinshawn Judkins. They they haven't been together long, but I'm sure knowing Tony, I'm sure they're right away that they connected and they like are already tight. Travion, that's got to be tough for Trey. It's got to be tough for Trey. It's got to be tough for Dallin, I would think, or maybe Dallin's thinking, listen, you didn't play me for whatever that much. Maybe Dallin's happy about it. You never know. But like from what I've been told by multiple sources, I'll just say it one more time. Tony was like kind of like the pseudo dad of the team a guy that the kids felt like they could go to about anything and that was like one of the best things he brought to the program and i think that's very valuable so gonna miss tony i still haven't reached out to him personally i'm still a little bit in shock but i i will eventually will reach out to him personally and tell him i'll be rooting for you i won't be rooting for your team and i certainly won't be rooting for you one day uh this coming year but i'm still rooting for tony Alford, the man he's a good man all right thanks dave Obviously, uh, not the day we anticipated, but uh, I appreciate you jumping on, giving some good insight there. So appreciate it. Thanks, Patrick. See ya. All right. We're going to go with a little bit different angle. Same story, though. Bill Curlick, our recruiting expert over at Bucknuts. 
to kind of talk about this situation from the recruiting side of things. But first, Bill, just how surprised were you? You uh, you texted me about this this morning when you saw the first report from Football Scoop. What was your first reaction when you heard about Tony Alford heading to Michigan? Well, I thought um, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, it was my first reaction. And um, especially with kind of what's going on up there. <laughs> That uh, has been a complete upheaval, uh, coaching staff lies up there. And, um, you know, everybody's waiting to see what, if any, hammer drops on them. They yeah. lost a lot of players. So I guess you could say, well, it's Michigan, but it's not exactly um, the situation he's walking into as uh, the situation that was at Michigan, say, uh, six months ago. Yeah, yeah. No Blake Corum in that running back room. Donovan Edwards is still back, but they lost a lot from that national championship team. And as you mentioned, there still could be sanctions coming down. There probably will be sanctions coming down after the uh, the whole scandal of last year. But we won't go into that. Uh, Bill, you already have a story up on Bucknuts that people can go read if they're VIP subscribers. Kind of a, your thoughts on the impact this will have on recruiting could you give us just kind of a general sense of, of what that is? And then people can go read the rest of it if they want and, and how this might impact the Buckeyes. Well, I think the, the biggest thing is the timing. It's, it's not a great time for this to happen because Ohio State is in the middle of spring practices. Now, obviously, you know, you're not going to have your running backs coach unless Ryan Day has somebody lined up right now to take over unless that happens you're not gonna have your running backs coach for at least part if not the rest of spring practices um but more importantly the way i look at it right this minute is the running back recruits that are coming in for visits um over the next few days weeks and months you know you've got um some of the very top of the board actually most of the very top of the board running back guys that Ohio State is after that are going to be visiting. You've got Jordan Davison from California, who is the number two running back in the country. He and his family are visiting Ohio State for four days, March 27th to April 1st. Um, you've got uh, Bo Jackson from up in Cleveland. He's going to be visiting Ohio State March 30th. And then you've got uh, Marquise Davis, is planning on visiting Ohio State likely sometime this spring. Uh, now, the good thing is with the Ohio guys, they've been to Ohio State multiple times, especially Marquise Davis many times. Um, so uh, maybe it's not quite as big a factor, but uh, it still is a factor. Uh, then you've also got Jeffrey Overton, you know, really good running back from Virginia, making an official visit to Ohio State May 31st. Now, I do think that um, – by then, Ryan Day will have his running back coach in, in on staff and all. But you, you look at the relationships. Whoever that new running backs coach is is going to have to build those relationships with these running with these outstanding running backs. Now, maybe it's somebody that's out there that's already recruiting these guys. Um, that certainly could happen, but we don't know that right now. So relationships are going to have to be made, and um, it, it'll be uh, you know it's just been an, an, an opportune time. Uh, especially when official visits being so close at hand and then decisions. These kids are going to be making their college choices, most of them, in the next few months. So I State's got to play a little catch up as far as that goes. In your experience, and you have plenty of it, the – Are you saying I'm old? No, I'm saying that you're very good at what you oh. do and you've been oh. doing it for a while. Okay, uh, I'll take that. Uh, I don't. Uh, I, I thought you were looking at the gray hair here. And No, what, what gray hair? Uh, the how big of a factor and I, I know every kid is different how big of a factor is it when a coach does leave like you were talking about as opposed to the program as a whole like what kind of impact let's not even say Tony Alford just a position coach we'll take Brian Hartline out of the mix just because he's Brian Hartline but your average position <laughs> coach when he leaves a program how big of an impact does it make on on the kids that that program's recruiting it makes a difference. Um, but to what extent depends on the kid. I mean, all kids, I, got, I like to say all kids are different. Uh, you know, they have different things that are at the top of their list. Um, but the relationship with the position coach is 
very important. And the position coach is the guy that uh, does most of the recruiting for that player. So that's that's very important. You, know, you, you want to know who is going to be your immediate uh, coach, so to speak, at the school you go to. So it is really important. Um, so losing Tony Alford in that regard is, is very important. Now, having said that, I, I fully expect Ryan Day to make a good hire here. Sure. And, um, you know, maybe a great hire, a spectacular hire. But he's going to get somebody good. And um, it's going to be somebody that I think will be able to recruit and develop those relationships. It's just that they're going to have to develop them, at least as far as being at Ohio State goes, they're going to have to develop them pretty quick. It, it takes time to develop relationships. You also talked about uh, something I was going to ask you about anyway, which was in terms of that hire, somebody who may have already been recruiting some of these guys. Do you think that that plays into Ryan Day? Obviously, you want to get the best running back coach you can, but do you think that does play a factor into to who comes next? I don't think that's a big factor. Okay. Um, I think mo more so overall would be the overall recruiting ability of the coach. You know, if he's a proven recruiter, uh, say at a, a West Coast school, as an example, and he's not really recruiting uh, most of these guys, maybe he's recruiting Jordan Davis hard because he's out there, but maybe not Bo Jackson so much or Marquise Davis so much or Jeffrey Overton so much. Um but if he's a proven recruiter, I think that'll translate. He'll be able to come into Ohio State and recruit well. So I think the, the more important factor is just the overall ability of that coach to recruit. And, you know, Urban Meyer used to – he flat out would say his first criteria when hiring an assistant coach yeah. was that coach's ability to recruit. Now, I don't necessarily think that Ryan Day is going to make this hire based on uh, necessarily – ability to recruit first and foremost, but I think that'll be a factor. In fact, I know it'll be a factor. Um, but I think um, it won't be a huge factor necessarily just in terms of does he have a prior relationship with each one of these recruits? Dave and I were talking about it before you came on. Um, just the the timing of this, obviously, and and transfer portals, all that. But one thing we didn't touch on was Tony Alford now will be recruiting for Michigan. Um, obviously, they've had Mike Hart there the, the last few years. He leaves, which is what opens this job up. What is Michigan getting as a recruiter in Tony Alford? And how much do you think that affects the Buckeyes going head to head with a guy like Tony Alford? Because as we know, High State and Michigan go head to head and all positions, not just running back, but they definitely have, especially recently with running backs. Well, Tony Alford's a good man, and he um, he knows how to connect to recruits. He's been doing this a long time. So uh, Michigan's going to get a guy that um, is a relationship guy. He's going to uh, be able to develop a relationship with, the, with, with these kids. And certainly Michigan's offered a scholarship, for instance, to Bo Jackson. You know, he's going to – he's got a relationship with Bo Jackson. So – you know, that's one guy right there that certainly you think that uh, they're they're going to go after hard. Uh, Tony Alford knows full well just how good Marquise Davis is. And Marquise Davis obviously is from Cleveland, Ohio. And that's uh, a stone's throw away from, from Michigan, really, when you look at the scale of how recruiting goes these days. So, uh, you know, that's going to be – you would think he'll be a factor in Marquise Davis recruitment uh, with Michigan. Um Jeffrey Overton, maybe not so much. Jordan Davidson. Jordan Davidson has not had Michigan as one of his very top of the board schools at all. So, you know, we'll see what happens in that regard. All right, Bill. Uh, any prediction, quick prediction on who the next running back coach is? If Bill Curlick is making that higher, who you got? Oh, boy. <laughs> you know, I'm that's, just teasing you. Yeah, I, the, uh, the, the one game that I think is really intriguing that's been brought up is Eddie George. And I think that is really intriguing. I just don't think it's likely to happen. And uh, in fact, um, you know, we, I think um, in the boarding house yesterday, there was an item or maybe the day before yeah. that, uh, that he uh, was not really interested. And, and I could, you know, his, his base right now is Tennessee he played for the Titans and all that. He's, he's a head coach down there now. And uh, um, yeah, I think he's, he seems pretty happy and content in that job, but uh it, but you never say never. I mean, you know, now the job's open. You know, I, somebody posted on our uh, board, that, you know, why would, you know, 
he's got a head coaching job. Why in the world would he go and be an assistant? Well, Chip Kelly could answer that question, I guess, why he did it. So, you know, it, 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 different factors for different people. But I think that, that would be an interesting uh, a possibility. I just don't, I don't truly think that's likely to happen at all. Yeah. Seems unlikely given that he has turned down advances before, but now that the job's open, I guess you never know what happens. Bill, thanks for jumping on. Obviously this day was flipped on its head when, when this news happened. And I know, well, it's not a direct recruiting uh, effect. I know you still had to, to change some of your plans to, to get some stories up. So I appreciate you jumping on with us. Thanks, Pat. Always uh, my pleasure and always enjoy. You do a great job. Thanks, Pat. You too. We will talk soon. All right. Thanks to Bill Curlick and Dave Biddle for both jumping on here with us. Uh, we wanted to make sure we got some content up on the site before we did one of these, but we also wanted to make sure we did one of these. So if you haven't already been over to Bucknuts to check out the stories we've got on Tony Alford. We've also got some other stuff up there. Steve Hellwagon is on his way to Minneapolis for the Big Ten uh, basketball tournament. He will be covering that for us, so he will have plenty of stuff on there. But plenty of Tony Alford stuff. I'll have some more stuff on some possible coaching candidates up here in the next little while. And if you're listening to this after the fact, it may already be up. But thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see what happens here with, with another position open at Ohio State in an offseason that has been very strange for this coaching staff. Thank you all for tuning in to this instant reaction from Bucknuts. We'll talk soon.